This is my long-term test bike for the year. It's the Surly Bridge Club and it's essentially a versatile multi-terrain touring bike. There are a lot of touring bike options out there and many of them will tend to cater for paved or off-road riding. The Bridge Club bridges the gap between the two. This is how it comes out of the box with one exception, but I'll come back to that one later. And it retails for £1,400 or $1,200. If you wanted to, you could just chuck some bike packing bags on there and take it straight off the beaten track. Otherwise, you could stick on some racks, some panniers, swap out the 650B wheels for some 700C wheels and take it on a long road tour. Where this bike will really come into its own though are those unplanned detours that will take you into unexpected places. Surly have been making touring bikes for a long time now, and if you're already familiar with their bikes, then the Bridge Club sits essentially at the entry level of their touring range. That doesn't mean it's an entry level price, but it's the most simplified, streamlined approach to a touring bike that Surly can offer. So you just have the mounts you need for mud guards, a front and rear rack, and there are also a few three-pack mounts for bottle cages, anything cages, everything bags, you name it. The Bridge Club comes stock with 650B WTB tubeless ready rims and 2.4 inch WTB Riddler Comp tyres. But you can actually fit up to 2.8 inch tyres on it if you want. It also has tyre clearances for up to 26 by 3 inch or 700 by 47C. So it's really versatile. One of the interesting things about this bike is it's slightly obscure rear spacing. Surly's opted for its own not boost QR spacing, which is not GNOT. It's their own version of boost spacing that allows for more chain and tyre clearance, and it's designed around 141mm boost quick release hubs. Now you may wonder why they didn't opt for through axles, and it's true they are stiffer, but this bike is meant to be taken out into the wilderness, and the thinking behind the quick release is that it's more widely available in remote areas. If you did want to run a smaller hub though, you can. There's about 1.5mm flex on each side of the rear dropout, so you could quite easily run a 138mm hub. You could also run a 135mm hub if you wanted to, but you'll need an adapter. One thing to mention though, unlike some of Surly's other touring bikes, the Bridge Club comes with a single vertical dropout, which means if you did want to run at single speed with a roll-off speed hub, you would need an adapter for that as well. The Bridge Club comes with 2x10 gearing. It has a SRAM GX rear derailleur, an X5 front derailleur and Truvative crankset. But in true versatility, you don't have to stop there. It can run the ever more popular 1x, but if you're more old school, you can throw a triple on there instead. Also with the gearing, it comes with a nice wide 1140 Sunrace cassette. And to keep things simple, it comes with a standard threaded bottom bracket and external cable routing, so easy to maintain. Since this is an extra small frame, the geometry does differ slightly from the rest of the sizes in the range, in that it has a one degree slacker head angle to account for toe overlap, and it's also missing the three pack mount on the seat tube. One thing I did change from the initial setup was I replaced the stock seat post with a gusset lofty XXL. That was because as an extra small frame, the reach is a lot closer, but I found that once I was pedaling the initial seat post that came with it just wasn't long enough for me. So that's something to bear in mind if you're a smaller rider like me. In terms of finishing kit, the bike comes with Salsa Bend 17 degree swept back handlebars, a WTB Volt saddle, which I'm probably gonna replace with my specialized power saddle, and a Cane Creek headset. Since this is my long-term test bike, I'm really gonna put it through its paces. I've been commuting on it the last couple of days, but I'm planning to take it on some longer rides. I'm planning to take it bikepacking in Scotland. But really what I want to know is, how would you kit out this bike? So whether you're a seasoned bikepacker or you're quite new to it yourself, I wanna hear your ideas. Leave your suggestions in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe.